What's up? I'm Hutch, and you need to understand pressure ulcers so that you can identify and treat them in your patients. And also pass the NPTE. Pressure ulcers usually occur in patients who are immobilized for a long period of time, like in the hospital. These patients, even in bed, are primarily weight-bearing on their bony prominences, so places like their heel, their sacrum, and their occiput. The increased pressure over a long period of time will decrease blood flow to these areas and cause these really, really deep wounds that'll show up first as bruising. On top of that, these patients are also usually incontinent and kind of sweaty, so their skin usually sticks to the sheets, increasing the friction and the shear forces involved in moving the patient. When the patient does move, their skin is much more likely to tear. And if the patient hasn't been cleaned recently, feces or urine can get into the wound and cause an infection before you even know about it. Once the wound is open, you'll see that it's pretty extensive. There can be a lot of breakdown, uh, exudate including necrotic tissue, and tunneling, which is basically when there's one big wound with a little land bridge of skin that goes over the top, but the underneath is all gone. There can also be undermining, which is when the wound covers an area that's wider than the opening that you see in the skin. Pressure ulcers are documented by stage, and once it's documented, it never changes. Once a stage four, always a stage four, even if it gets better. The stages are based on how deep the wound is. One is superficial, two is partial thickness, three is full thickness. Once you get to four, it's a little bit trickier because four is also a full thickness wound, but it's one that has necrotic tissue in it as well. Now, if you're debriding a lot of necrotic tissue and you can't find the bottom of the wound, it's considered unstageable. For some of your patients in the hospital, you may want to use the Baden scale to determine how at risk they are for developing a pressure ulcer. It consists of six items all graded on a one to four scale, four being no impairment at all. The most important thing for you to understand about the Baden scale as far as the NPTE is concerned is the grading scale. So less than nine, they're at severe risk for getting a pressure ulcer versus 15 to 18, they're at really mild or low risk. Treatment and also prevention includes offloading those bony prominences by using lots of pillows in really convenient areas, as well as repositioning the patient at minimum every two hours. You'll also want to include moisture control, debridement, and probably a wound vac. If you want to know a little bit more about the modalities and dressings that are used for these types of wound, stay tuned because I've got another video coming for you. Now it's time for NPTE Jeopardy! Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise, you've got five, four, three, two, one. Both stages three and four are full thickness wounds, but stage four includes necrotic tissue like slough or eschar. Hopefully that covers all the bases. If you still need a little bit more, feel free to check out the description box below for a link to my notes on Etsy. Otherwise, drop me a comment with questions or suggestions on videos I should do in the future. Good luck studying. Go change the world.